Oh, 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 it's magic. You know. <laughs> uh, many things are happening today. Many. Many things are happening today. You're What's, right. What is today? Today is the 24th. Yep. It's episode 173. 173, they say. Uh, yep. It is the day that Elvis joined the army. Salute, Salute Elvis. Salute, yeah. Salute your shorts. It is some cool folks' birthdays today. Yeah. Um, Nick Lowe. Nick Lowe, Rob What's Lowe's so little brother. What's funny about peace, love, and understand? No, no, uh, that's Elvis Costello, sorry. Yep. Uh, cruel to be kind. Cruel that's, to be, of course. That's yes, that's what I was going to say. Uh, Kelly LeBrock, the hot chick from Weird Science. Whoa. Yeah. Happy birthday, Kelly LeBrock. <clears throat> Jessica Chastain. Hello, Jessica. Hello, Jessica. Our favorite redhead. You feel free to slide in my DMs anytime. <laughs> wow. Um, and Clyde Barrow, who is famously Clyde of Bonnie and Clyde. Hey. Yeah. Bonnie and Clyde birthdays. But you know who else's birthday it is? Harry Houdini. How'd you? You magicked that. I pulled it out of my hat. You pulled a rabbit out of a hat. Yep. You magicked it. So we're going to talk about magic and Harry Houdini. We today. are, yeah, because I want to know more. Right after the intro. Okay, bye. I'm Misty. And I'm Ike. For the next 15 minutes, we're going to debate pop culture. My background's in music. My background's in film. I know the topics beforehand. And I don't. We check the internet for the facts. And ruin it with opinions. From pop rocks in your lunchbox. To Happy Meal toys and swatch clocks. I got 10 facts, 10 things you may not know about Harry Houdini. I can tell you the first thing that I did not know about him. Yeah. I pulled up Harry Houdini and a photo came up. He has probably the most piercingly frightening eyes of any human I've ever seen in my life. Oh, no. Yours don't scare me. Oh, okay. His scare me. I've only seen like paintings of him. I haven't seen actual. Yeah, those are pretty weird. Yeah. Yeah. Like he has a very intense stare. Yeah. Yep. It's a lot. Um, did you know he named himself after another magician? Well, that's not very magical. No. Uh, Houdini was born <laughs> Eric Weiss's. Right, because he's, he's yeah. Aust- Hungario-Austrian, because it was still Austro-Hungary Hungary then. Well, after his family immigrated from Hungary to Wisconsin when he was four years old, they changed <laughs> his name to Eric Weiss, but E-H-R-I-C. Eric? Eric, or Eric Probably Eric. <laughs> I, I, er, er, I, er. What man? I can't even imagine that. Like back then, going from uh, from Budapest to Wisconsin. Yeah, that'd be weird. But I, mean, I hope um, we like cheese. Young, uh, young Eric, nicknamed <laughs> Airy or Harry, had a fascination with magic, particularly the work of the famed French conjurer Jean Eugene Robert Houdin. And and was that guy a famous magician or was he just like a? Yeah, apparently he was a famed French conjurer, according to this. Here. Conjurer. Okay. Mm-hmm. Okay. Uh, let's see here. He was famous for stealing shit. That guy was, or Harry, like our Harry Houdini. I'm skipping around, so I'm not. Uh, wow. Whew. Uh, let's see here. When he began he paid homage to his hero by adding an I to the end of the name Houdini to create the stage moniker Harry Houdini. In a strange twist, Houdini le- later courted controversy by accusing his former idol of stealing other magic tricks. He even wrote a 1980, uh, 1908 book called The Unmasking of Robert Houdin, in which he branded his namesake a fraud who waxed Oof. great on the brain work of others. Well, I mean, I have to tell him, throwing that eye on the end of it really made it, because mm. it makes it catchy. Houdini. Harry Houdini. Yeah. Do you know his brother was also an escape artist, and he was not very successful? Oh, that's funny. And he often got billed as brother of Houdini. Wow. <laughs> Just that. Brother of Houdini. So, like... <laughs> Poor guy. Well, you know, Houdini was the king of the handcuffs. Right. The so, straight jacket. Too. Yeah. Yeah. Was his brother... And then he would go underwater and get out of it and all that stuff. Do you know his brother actually came up with that? Well, did his brother? Uh, but he failed at it. That's what I'm trying to drive at. Is yeah. Like, is that how his brother died? It was like his brother came up with it. He failed at it, but he didn't drown and die. But then Harry took over the trick and did it successfully. Hmm. So, man, there's some sibling rivalry going on there. Man, um, he once escaped from the belly of a sea monster. What? 
What sea monster? I don't know. Uh, in September 1911, a group of Boston businessmen challenged Houdini to attempt the most bizarre stunt of his career and escape from the belly of a 1,500-pound, quote-unquote, sea monster that had washed up in the city's harbor. Historians still aren't sure what the creature actually was. It's been described as everything from a whale to a leatherback turtle, but Houdini was up to the task. As thousands of spectators looked on, he allowed himself to be handcuffed, shackled in leg irons, and wedged inside the stinking carcass. Oh, God. Which was then covered in chains and placed behind a curtain. Houdini emerged in triumph after just 15 minutes, but later admitted that he was nearly suffocated by the fumes from the chemicals to embalm the beast. I bet. That's gross. So here's the deal. Hi. That, what is, I can't remember what the movie is where um, Jim Carrey crawls out of the ass of the rhino. Oh. <laughs> like, that's all uh, I keep thinking about. Ace Ventura. That's, is it Ace Ventura that he does that? Yeah. Okay. It's definitely. This has been a really long time because you know yeah. I'm not a huge Jim Carrey fan. Yeah. Um, well, you should be. He's a genius. I know. You told me that. But. Um, ba, 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 ba. Wow. Yeah, but any, I don't, I don't get That's the curtain so thing. Like it's already a whale. He's inside right. the whale. <laughs> right. Like if you give me a curtain, then all of a sudden there's a saw in there and I'm hacking my way out of the b- right. belly of the beast. I don't know. Um, I thought this was pretty funny, and I think you might as well. When he registered for the military, because he had to in 1918, he listed his name as Harry Handcuff Houdini. That's pretty funny. <laughs> what a quirky dude. Yeah. So that was World War One, right? Yeah. Huh. Um, did you know that he was an aviation pioneer? I had no idea. Yeah. He developed a passion for aviation while in Europe in 1909. He bought a French-made Voyosin biplane and became one of the world's first private pilots. Wow. He crashed during his maiden flight in Germany, but he continued practicing and eventually set his sights on becoming the first man to pilot an airplane in Australia. Wow. During a tour down under in March 1910, Houdini hopped behind the controls of his Voyosin and made three successful flights near Melbourne, each only a couple minutes long. Aerial League of Australia certified Houdini's displays as the country's first powered and controlled flight. Whoa, that's pretty cool, actually. Yeah. So if you're like, so he was um, a pilot. Yeah. First person to fly a plane in Australia. Mm-hmm. He was a magician. Clearly, he also was a trapeze artist. Oh yeah. And he was like super duper into sports when he was in school, and he was very good at a lot of them. Like, man, talk about being like just really being good at anything that you try. Mm-hmm. It's pretty incredible. You know, he had a brief career in the silent film business. <laughs> he just did everything, well, didn't then, he? Uh, it, he was in the first movie to feature a robot. What? Yeah, he was basically the Elon Musk of like the 19th. Basically, <laughs> yeah. He's just like, oh, yeah, I can do that. Cool. Um, but having lost a large chunk of his personal fortune, Houdini quit the movie business for good in 1923. So he bought an entire studio and started making Shut film. up. Yeah. Wow. He, he bu- debunked physics and the supernatural. He literally is the Elon Musk of the early 1900s. Mm-hmm. Wow. He, yeah. He, in the 1920s, he embarked on a second career as a professional skeptic and debunker of physics, mind readers, mediums, and other spiritualists who purported to be able to contact the deceased. Hmm. Interesting. He, he gave up a ten thousand dollar reward to any psychic who could present physical pheno- pho- phenomena. 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 Um. Phenome- I'm going to say it until the episode's over. <laughs> so I thought this was pretty cool because you know you said earlier that he was the king of the handcuffs yeah. and <clears throat> he he created a lot of the handcuff tricks. And a lot of imitators kind of, you know, tried to do that after him. So he released a book called Handcuff Secrets and revealed how to perform all of the common handcuff tricks. And he got in trouble with the Magicians League (laughs) for revealing the secrets. Because you're not supposed to do that. It's a big deal. That is a big deal. Yeah. I learned that the, the first time I went to the Magic Castle. Um, well, we kind of talked for a second off air about his 
a state. Tell me all the cool stuff. Because I've heard a bunch of cool stuff, and I just I need to know more. Well, you can go to the HoudiniEstate.com and see uh, a couple of quick pictures. Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. Here's the history. Let's see here. Built in the Edwardian tradition in the, in the early 1900s, the Houdini Estate still has caves, hidden tunnels, terraced gardens, and a deep water tank where Harry Houdini reportedly practiced his underwater escapes. The secluded property was the perfect retreat for America's first action hero. Houdini used the estate's pool to practice his amazing feats of escape and illusion until a short time before his death in 1926. The magic and mystery of the handcuffed king still remained with the property where uh, Houdini's wife, Bess, gave a famous party for 500 magicians. 500? And lived years after her husband died. The estate and its gardens were restored and now enjoy modern amenities while maintaining the grand mystique and marvel of Harry Houdini. Who owns it now? Um, I know this is not a fact, but from the things that I've heard from local LA residents, mm-hmm. um, what's the producer's name with the big beard, the music producer? What's his name? He did hip hop, and then he did Red Hot Chili Peppers, and he did Rick Rubin. Rick Rubin. Mm-hmm. I I heard. I don't know. It's not a fact. I've heard that too as well. And yeah, it's right off of Laurel. Mm-hmm. Uh, I've driven by it a million times. All of my friends have shot there. Mm-hmm. For various bands. Right. It was like a band hangout slash film location totally. for a really long time. Yeah. They um, used to have the old van outside. Yeah. Do you remember that? Yeah. Yeah. Um, interesting. I wonder if Rick Rubin does still own it. Well, Rubin bought an estate out in Malibu, which is where he's shooting that new show. Oh, right. He's got the bus where you can go. There's a, stu- bu- a studio and a bus. Yeah. And there's all those little white buildings which around it, the coast. Which is what the old bus in front of the Houdini's used to be it was a recording studio oh so then that lends itself even further right to the, the mansion a four-bedroom mansion formerly owned by music producer rick rubin in laurel canyon is it the very same one? Oh, this is a twist <laughs> interesting so although many say that harry houdini lived in the mansion no one has ever lived in that mansion under the name houdini so if he did live there, it was registered under a different name. Mm. This doesn't oh, look like the house that I've seen off of Laurel. Because they're side by side. Are There's they? the mansion and the Houdini estate. Really? One is 2451 Laurel Canyon Boulevard and one is 2400. So one is like a facade. Be like, that's where Harry Houdini lives. And he really lives. Right. Nick. Oh, right. That's interesting. Look at that. He magicked people into thinking he lived somewhere else. Yeah. And he had <sighs> he had tunnels to It he once rented the cottage at the mansion. Apparently there's a cottage behind it. Interesting. Yeah. So many pictures. You guys should go to the houdiniestate.com and click on gallery. He's got frogs playing the saxophone as statues like all over the property. That's pretty great. Yeah. You can throw... There's a like a 1,500-pound white stone Buddha. What? Yeah, it's pretty nuts, man. What? Uh, well, that's all the magic that's I got on Houdini. Well, hold on. I got a couple of, of other fun things. Okay. <laughs> oh, it's on the corner of Willow Glen. And look out, mm-hmm. look out Mountain across the street. Mm-hmm. Also, I did um, run across that photo of Harry Houdini in his film, the one that featured the robot. And did you get any images of it? Uh Uh-uh. Okay. You should look up the images of it because the robot is amazing. And anyone that's watching this, look up Harry Houdini robot movie. (laughs) Harry Houdini robot. It's literally a robot suit with a human in it. And it's like the most like elementary like eyes and mouth that they've put on it it's like googly oh, eyes it's, yeah <laughs> it's real funny it's like if it was made out of all like barrels of right uh, metal barrels right completely or if the stay puff marshmallow man was made out of like it's like the t- it's like the tin man from yeah from wizard, of, wizard oz, of oz but if it was inflatable you know like those t-rex outfits you can wear that inflate? oh my god completely kind of looks like one of those yeah 
I, I, I ran across it and I was like, oh my God, everyone needs to look that up because that is pretty fantastic. I love how and, they took the barrel and turned it sideways for his Right, for the midsection. middle part. Yeah. <laughs> That's nuts, man. Oh, uh, what a like really unique, interesting human. Yeah, I hope he was a, also a good person. What? How did he die? Because I know he died young. It's a mystery. There's, <gasps> there's a debate about it. Really? Yeah. And what's the debate over? Uh, I don't know. I just because um, they showed his headstone in one of the articles, and it was like cause of death uh, still under debate. Harry Houdini death. Let's see. He died at fifty-two. That's pretty young. Oh, a ruptured appendix. Hmm. Oh, right. But it was because, wasn't it because he took a cannonball to the stomach? Probably. I mean, that sounds about right. <laughs> yeah. I wouldn't be surprised. Following a blow to the stomach mm-hmm. delivered by an inquisitive and... Uh, in, 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 oh. Oh, that's the thing. He was teaching and a it was class. was on Halloween. Yeah, he was teaching a class on how you can strengthen. If you're ready for a punch, you can take any punch. Oh, right, and then right. He, he relaxed, and someone <gasps> punched him when he wasn't looking. I read that somewhere else. Oh, wow. And it, and it killed him. Wow. Yeah. I wonder if that magician like continued his trying to be a magician, or it was just like, I killed... Harry Houdini. Well, I quit a, now. He, I think he was doing a lecture at a university. He was a university oh. student, so I don't know if it was a future magician. Yeah, there's a bunch of articles that are entitled Who Killed Houdini? Right. <laughs> I know that some wow. of you guys out there know this story, so leave Surely, a comment yeah. and, and clarify it for us. We only, we're out of time. But, uh, so oh, yeah, we are. We try and do the best we can in the limited amount of time we have, and yeah. sometimes we get facts wrong, but I know you guys will correct us because you always do. So leave us a comment and tell us exactly how Houdini died. Somebody tell me more about this. I need yeah. to know. Yeah. And I can't look up everything. No. I just can't do it. Maybe tomorrow. All right. Unless it's Friday. It's not Friday. So then. I'll see you tomorrow. All right. Bye. <laughs>